wake up at 6 a.m. I remember that I have no kids to take to school. That you could be a girl boss and you can do anything a man can do, which everyone who's ever seen a woman back up a vehicle knows that's not true. Inflation is now its highest since 1982, hitting 9.1%. And driving that rise, the essentials. They're unlikely to have more kids, virtually unchanged, since 2018. So what does this mean for society? Well, it means that we're going to go bankrupt. Study says that catastrophic climate change outcomes, including human extinction, are not being taken seriously enough by scientists. The uh, rampant discrimination against women, especially married women and working mothers in a lot of South Korean workplaces. And if you don't want children, well, you probably will. And if you don't, you're either deluded or immature. And in the future, I mean, maybe, if I have a really fulfilling career and I manage to find an amazing partner who would also make a wonderful parent, and if I feel financially and emotionally stable enough to raise a good person in this global climate with all of the things that are happening. What about the child, this woman? She gossips and plays bridge because she's got nothing better to do. <laughs> what a waste of time. And that's a day in the life of a childless woman. Woman enters her villain era and actually just says what they want. Trigger warnings discussions of pregnancy, abortion, and death. When someone says they don't want to have kids. Hey, excuse me, madam. Russia. me, how about you? Why exactly is this? And why is this vitriol aimed at women in particular? Are we causing the demise of the planet? Are we actually that powerful? Why is it that a happy, child-free woman is so scary? I have to say this because you never know how people are going to interpret you. This is not an attack on parents, people that want to have kids, people that don't have kids. This is literally just me deciding like, I actually just want to look into the why there is all of this hatred towards women that choose not to have children. I'm specifically focusing on women here because this sadly does have a very sexist angle to it. The debate around people choosing to be child free is not a new one. Um, a quick google search, my first thing I typed in, brought up articles dating back to 2014 but this has been going on for far longer than that. It just so happens that right now we've just got everyone like Ah, right now. And of course, Tucker Carlson popping up because outrage sells Shan Spears video. Go check it out. Do you remember the boom of like the terribly flawed career woman that was all over movies in the 1980s? Think Sigourney Weaver in Working Girl and also see Diane Keaton in Baby Boom. That poor woman. I tried to watch that movie. I couldn't make it through it. Actually, if you want to blame something that isn't about women collectively banding together or to collectively rise up about something, then look no further than World War II because women were literally asked to step into those roles, in particular in America. I remember feeling very good and I felt good the whole time at doing this work that had traditionally been men's work and I felt proud and I felt able and capable. Because we showed that we could do a man's job, that there weren't that many differences. Would you give up your career if the right man proposed? No, I wouldn't. It was the first time that women were involved en masse in war efforts. Eleanor Roosevelt actually made it possible for women to join in these new careers by streamlining children's care centers to prioritize childcare for working mothers. The childcare facilities allowed women to obtain jobs and support their families, something that would be revolutionary for the future of America. We'll come back to that. The strides of women came to a screeching halt when men returned from war. Women were now being fired or demoted in the same untraditional fields and trades that they had actually been excelling in during the war years. Imagine that. Like, what a kick in the teeth. Men were actually rehired into their original positions after the war, despite how successful women actually were in these positions. Women have shown what they could do in war, and now that the fighting is over, Women intend to show the world what they can do in peace. And now that the fighting is over and the war is won, the little dears can, uh, can get back to their pots and pans. <laughs> <laughs> Women were pushed from higher paying positions into the service sector, therefore lower pay and less stability and career progression. It really does feel like an endgame snap moment, doesn't it? 
During the war years, American society promoted women's expanded roles as a form of patriotism, but as soon as the war ended, they expected women to return to the home to fulfill their domestic duties, to prepare themselves for the time where they would become wives and mothers. Thus, entering the workforce and becoming fathers and husbands now became a hallmark of American masculinity after the war. This is a fascinating article, by the way. Go read it if you want to see like how masculinity got skewed by World War II. Basically, women were meant to make men feel secure after the horror of war, and honestly, I am not downplaying the horrors of war because it utterly terrifies me just as a concept in itself. I can't even watch war movies, genuinely. Those that did return, many actually had emotional trauma. They came home with scars, missing limbs, all sorts of issues. What returned was not what America wanted to promote themselves as being, as having this whole body image, which is as ableist as it sounds. What America was promoting was a very ableist view of this strong, independent, white, cishet male man that could now hold down a job, he's fought for his country, he is valiant and flawless. This image is very important when it comes to the attempts of picking it apart and actually allowing men to let go of this because this is a huge problem. They had a job and a doting wife who was a mother to their offspring. But this image was a false ideal. It wasn't actually possible for a lot of people. But did that stop it from prevailing in all advertisements that we've seen from the 50s? No. <laughs> this ideal was definitely not available to minorities at all, or people who had become disfigured by the war. And what about the fact that the wives now had to take on this extra job of not only being like nurses to their husbands, therefore emasculating the husband further, but then also being that person to handle the emotional trauma because remember therapy really wasn't a thing that people would turn to. Women who wanted to have a career after they got a taste of it during World War II were called all sorts of names by psychiatrists, journalists, uh, society as a whole, their friends, their husbands, everybody. They were said to be unlovely women, riddled with guilt complexes and penis envy. And they were lost and also man-hating. Aren't those the exact same sort of phrases that are being used to <laughs> describe women that are choosing not to have children now? Or heck, even those that decide to stay single. The thing that I'm pointing out here is the expectation and force, let's be honest, because if you're fired from your job and demoted, then what other choice do you actually have? Um, to go back into these traditionalist roles which they weren't actually comfortable in anymore. This was all in order to give men a sense of safety and security. This was specifically done to look after the men that had come back from war. As we know, when America sneezes, the whole world gets a cold. This sort of thinking is very common in a lot of Western countries. And some people hold on to this image so tightly still today because it provides this same sense of comfort because that's what's been taught for generation after generation. And really, it's a surefire way to be able to control women without actually resorting to violence, even though violence happened then, and it sadly still happens now. I've talked about this before. Y'all ain't breeding enough. Let's talk about pronatalism. God. I think that, well, there's so many humans, maybe too many humans, uh, but that's just because they live in a city. Uh, if you're in an aircraft and you look down, they say if you dropped a, a cannonball, how often would you hit a person? That's weird. Birth rates around the world are dropping and we're doomed because of an aging population. Quite simply, there won't be enough taxpayers to take care of the useless oldies. Because don't forget, unless you are participating and producing in an economy, then you are useless under capitalism. Oh, you must smell leftovers. Please, we call them senior citizens. I mean, if we did close the tax loopholes, tax the rich properly and businesses properly, and tax the churches, I don't really think that we'd be in such a sticky situation. Whatever. Whatever. I, what do I know? I'm just someone that makes videos online. Don't look at me. I don't know a thing. So, we have this problem with pronatalism rearing its ugly, eugenics, social Darwinist head. It's proudly being touted by influential people such as Elon Musk, who has 10 children to three different women, which if the genders were actually reversed, he wouldn't be thought of quite so well now, would he? Um, but hey, gotta love misogyny. Don't forget about welfare queens though, and of course people that just keep having babies to get more doll money, because that's why people are doing- no, that's- oh. So frustrating. But the thing is, those are racist stereotypes and myths perpetuated from the 1980s. Go watch intellectual media because their videos are 
amazing and they've covered this incredibly well. Um, but that sort of stereotype still impacts us here because people that have larger families typically are Māori or Pacifica and um, <clears throat> there is a whole lot of racism and classism that is weaponized against people here in particular with like those harmful stereotypes placed on them and it's Oh, it's inescapable here, honestly. So basically, you're bad for having children if it's too many and you're the wrong type of person, which we can easily read through those eugenics lines, can't we? Yeah, cool. And you're also a bad person for not having children. What do you want from us? <laughs> Let's go global, baby. Is this really a big issue and what's actually behind it? In order to sustain the population, the birth rate needs to be 2.1 children to every one woman. And that is according to OECD data. I can't cover every single country, but when people think about countries with very low birth rates and aging populations, one country that immediately comes to mind is Japan because that has been covered in the news a lot for many years. In 2014, City Assembly member Ayaka Shiomura, who's 35, was talking about measures to support child raising and boost fertility during a session when male lawmakers interrupted her with cries of go and get married and can't you give birth. Just a reminder, this was in a political setting. Japan's birth rate is 1.34 per woman. Japan's gone into a decade-long push for children first from Prime Minister Fumio Kishida because he says that Japan is on the brink of social dysfunction. In a 2021 survey, 53% of people said the high cost of raising children was a reason for having no or fewer children. What Japan's doing is they're going to work on three separate pillars, economic support, childcare services, and reform of working styles. I've never lived in Japan myself, so I cannot speak to experience here. Um, from what I have read and from the people that I watch, um, I'm aware that there are very traditional gender roles in Japan and also there is kind of a toxic work culture there um, but I honestly can't speak to this myself so um, you tell me. And none of the issues that people have been raising have actually been about the selfishness of women, it's been about the fact they can't afford it. It's systemic issues basically. So let's move on to South Korea because their birth rate is the lowest in the world at 0.78 per woman according to this Guardian article which literally just came out this week. The reasons that women aren't having children are the ones that you would expect. They cite the high cost of raising children, poor job prospects amid economic slowdown, and rises in real estate prices. Now, while some women actually do say that they prefer to prioritize their personal freedom and have ruled out finding a marriage partner, those main reasons are actually about money, stability, financial issues. <laughs> it's not actually about Oh, I just want to be a selfish brat, so it's complete mislabeling. In South Korea, they've launched programs to try and encourage people to actually have children, including cash hands out, help with fertility treatments, and medical expenses. But they don't actually address the sky-high living costs and changing attitudes towards gender roles and work-life balance. So, once again, it's systemic issues. Let's spin the globe and move over to Finland. Finland have just recorded their lowest birth rate in 150 years. Their fertility rate is 1.33. According to a study conducted by the University of Helsinki using data from 2015 and 2018, uncertain life situations and lifestyle preferences and completed fertility are cited as being the three main reasons, with the uncertain life situation being the strongest factor as to why people weren't having children. Who'd have thought that an economic crisis and a climate crisis would kind of deter people from having children? Reluctantly, let's spin the globe and look at what the USA is doing. Oh, oh, okay, they're going down the punishment route and the most violent course of action um, in order to get people to have children. Um, okay, uh, so they rolled back Roe v. Wade, which I'm sure that everybody is sadly aware of. Um, the USA actually has 1.64 births per woman. Now in a very dystopian way, there is no choice but to have the baby, regardless of how they were conceived, regardless of the age of the person, regardless of the life that the child would lead, and regardless of the safety of the mother. A dead body has more rights in America than a woman does now. The thing is, like I said before, when America sneezes, the world gets a cold, and these political decisions have been having impacts around other parts of the Western world, sadly, including 
here in little old Aotearoa, Christopher Luxon, who is the leader of the opposition party, which is the National Party, our version of the Republican Party. Um, he is pro-forced birth, aka what you may know as pro-life. I like to call it pro-forced birth because, let's be real, that's what it is. But he's promised that if he comes into power, he wouldn't roll back our protections here. But he personally holds it really staunchly that um, he's pro-life. So I don't... Mm, I don't know how much I trust that. It does worry me a lot because we're swinging a lot more right now here. So, ooh. And actually speaking of here in Aotearoa, our birth rate is 1.61, below what it should be, but we've also got a cost of living crisis. You know, Brandon and I, we are dinks. Ding, 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 ding. And we are very worried. Like we go checking our finances all the time about how we're going to afford retirement and everything. But the cost of living is in a terrible Place at the moment honestly uh, so yeah I can't like, I can't even imagine what it's like raising children because raising children here astronomically expensive also you have to love how this is framed in articles here with an aging population who will look after us who will pay taxes and bolster up the workforce how much do we want to rely on a steady flow of migrants in order to keep society ticking over Racism is inescapable here in Aotearoa. I will never stop reminding you of that. So from what I've just shared with you, it's actually down to more systemic issues than people just being bratty, selfish women. Um, there's a cost of living crisis, there is the uncertainty of the future, there are systemic issues, there is inequality, there are so many issues that actually play into this entire picture. And you wonder why women may not want to take on the burden of having a child, especially if they're not ready for it. Could I have two sandwiches today? Make the bologna sandwiches too. Could I have two slices of bologna? One at a time! One at a time! So let's talk about the inequality. So when women actually have children, this does impact their careers. It's literally called the motherhood penalty, and no, this is not one where you can score a hat trick and you're better off, because actually if you have three children, then your career is more slumped down, so great. Personal example here, my mom used to work in science, but when she had kids, she had to leave that career because you can't take time out of science when you're researching. Things have changed a bit more now because I work for scientists and people come and go um, on maternity leave, but back then, because remember 1989 here, that wasn't a thing. Um, and it's still not really all that easy to be a mother when you are working full time. There is a really interesting study that has recently come out which dives into the long term impact. So it has a look at all of these other studies that are looking at the short term impacts. It's, it's very thorough. I'll link it down below. It's very long. <laughs> Women's careers in the short term, as they put it, during their 20s and 30s are severely impacted when women have children. But there is hope at the end of the tunnel. Finally, when women are in their 40s and 50s, their pay parity kind of goes on the same sort a level as other women um, so you just have to get through I don't know what like the first 15 years of a child's life um, so that they can become like able to look after themselves at home so you don't have to worry about babysitting them all the time and everything so it's just around about like maybe 15 years now in this study they do say that more research needs to happen in this area but looking at all of this it was very interesting to see that yeah definitely um, having a child impacts women more than it impacts men. Gender norms are definitely still firmly in place. I'm sure that there's anecdotal evidence that you'll be able to actually provide down below, whether you're a parent yourself or your own parents, like their issues or caregivers, whoever in your life. As much as we like to think that we've progressed, that we've married feminist men, that we split the bills 50-50, which actually, side note here, um, can I just have a petition to normalize people paying sort of like equal amounts in comparison to their own salaries? when it comes to relationships because typically men still earn more money so then why is the woman, girlfriend, whoever in the relationship who's earning this still expected to pay half when it's actually that much of theirs and it's this much of yours. So just the petition for that because that's actual equity. Um, what's happening if you're doing a 50-50 split? That's not really equity. One thing which really hasn't kept up is the housework, the emotional labour, and childcare of couples. Now, this is very heteronormative here. There's a few small studies done on same-sex couples, but yeah, this is sadly very heteronormative and cisgender. Please send more money to science. We need more work done. Thank you. In different sex relationships, women do around 65% of the physical household work. 
Chores that are routine, like cooking and cleaning, tend to fall on women, whilst intermittent chores, like sorting out finances or mowing the lawn, actually fall on the men to do. And to quote this expert, this means that the unpaid female's role to-do list is relentless. Add to the burden of cognitive labour, remembering birthdays, organising playdates, which disproportionately falls to women in heterosexual relationships, it's exhausting. So marriage serves men better than women, kind of. Like, there's a lot of studies in this area. It would take me too long to dive into everything. Do you remember the piece that came out saying that single, unmarried, child-free women were actually the happiest in terms of all people? This was by Paul Dolan, who's a professor of behavioral science at the London School of Economics. We do have some good longitudinal data following the same people over time, but I'm gonna do a massive disservice to that science and just say, if you're a man, you should probably get married. If you're a woman, don't bother. Women have evolved due to collective action, empowering each other, and a lot, and I mean a lot, of work and harassment. Men's expectations have stayed more rigid, you know, with this sort of same image of the post-war American man, um, which is why it's so hard to try and pick apart the toxic masculinity that comes along with it, because it's been set in place since, what, the 1940s? That's over 60 years ago that this has been baked in, repeated, time and again. People have been brought up with this sort of mentality. It's no wonder that it's really hard to pick apart and have people unlearn stuff and then relearn and teach others, you know? What was sold as empowering to women, which was having a great job and still getting dinner on the table and having the house look great and doing all of the wonderful things, not to mention having 2.5 amazing, beautiful, beaming children that are doing incredibly well at school. Um, don't know how they do it all, right? It's actually just a whole bunch of unpaid work that just got added on to women. What changes have men needed to make in order to change their roles? Because women got empowered by taking a lot more work on and doing everything with a smile on their face. Um, but men's evolution has been a little bit more slow, shall we say. They are doing more parenting work, which is fantastic. They're doing some more housework as well, but it's still fairly unequal, <laughs> shall we say, when it comes to the work in and work out of both partners. Because realistically, women are still doing most of the work, so why get married and have children if it means taking on a second unpaid job? More good women have lost a marriage into war, famine, disease and disaster. You have talent, darling. I do hope that by exploring things here, you see that it's not just bratty selfish behavior that we're seeing at all. I've shown that it's actually a multifaceted issue which involves a lot of systemic issues. It's more the fact that when women choose not to have children, it goes against the typical means of control, so the way to turn it back against them is through public shaming. Something which has been done time and again to women. No matter what, as a woman, you can't just live your life without being picked apart. You're picked apart if you have kids, you're picked apart if you don't have kids, you're picked apart for what you wear, you're picked apart if you gain weight or lose weight or if you age at all. Like, no matter what, people are going to criticise women. <laughs> and there is a lot more toxicity when it comes to motherhood and how everybody feels like they're entitled to their own opinions and judgement and everything on them as mothers. So. I fully get why other people are opting out of having children when they see all of this around them and they're like, I don't want to participate in that. Why are we questioning women who say that they just want to be able to enjoy their lives and be free when we're not doing that to single men? It's it's just clearly sexism is all I'm pointing out here. In my mind, it takes a lot of emotional maturity and self-reflection to realize that you actually don't want to become a parent. Like, you actually have to sit with that, take time, think through stuff before saying, I don't want to have kids. It's an intimidating thing to actually come out with. Um, I don't know if you have watched anything from Anna Arcana, and more recently, Danny Duncan has become fairly famous for the work that they do as well. I'll have them linked down below. But when women actually come out and say this, Chelsea Handler, for example, um, you get met with a lot of vitriol and people hating you because you're not fitting into gender norms. Independence is scary, and by actually promoting that is what people seem to think it is for some reason, when it's actually more about, I want to say this because 
I know how scared I was before saying this and I don't want other people to feel as scared and judged as me, like cr try and create this community. As soon as people come up and say that there is vitriol <laughs> against them. Let's go on to my final thought. Self-sufficient women are scary, women in community are even more scary. Capitalism just doesn't work well with pregnancy in a way that doesn't explicitly exploit the person that gives birth. It wants the future workforce but won't support people who want to have kids because it actively punishes them due to inbaked patriarchy within capitalism. It hurts their career, it means that they have to be dependent on others, and it calls them a drain on the system if they require government aid. People are struggling with a cost of living crisis globally with a lack of financial stability when that is essential to be able to afford to live. When the workload is higher, the financial stability isn't there. The expectations on parents to make their kids into like these perfect little university goers from listening to Mozart when they're in their tummies all the way to having to do heaps of extracurricular activities when they're five and do all of this other stuff so then the child can succeed in this very sort of boxed in sort of way which honestly I feel for the kids and I feel for the parents that have to do all of this extra ridiculous amount of work especially when boobers are saying back in my day we just went outside and had fun and it's like no these days every kid is like what four classes after school that they have to go to in order to try and be able to get into a university to be able to get a job that won't pay them enough to be able to afford the university that they had to go to <sighs> sorry <laughs> As I spoke about a couple of weeks ago, our future is literally burning and flooding at the same time. Is there any question why people are second guessing having children when they know what's coming? So people have been opting out of the prescribed motherhood trajectory and they're just living life like a single man would. They are still participating in capitalism, but they're not doing their part as a provider to capitalism by birthing more taxpayers. <laughs> so what's done instead is women are judged, jeered at, labelled, shunned and painted as a nasty woman because they're failing in a patriarchal way to be seen as quote feminine and go watch this video from a foreign man in a foreign land if you haven't yet really great. It's really all about controlling women but branded differently to have broad appeal using an appeal to nature fallacy. When you actually think about it in fairy tales we haven't written single women who are older to be happy. They tend to be the bad people in fairy tales. They don't tend to be like the protagonist in movies. It tends to be these sad lonely tropes of like crazy cat lady, all these very unhealthy sort of things. Some women are written well in media that portray living a happy child free life and single but that doesn't happen very often. It's one of the reasons that one of my favourite comfort movies is Under the Tuscan Sun because love actually comes from the community and doing something for yourself like it's actual empowerment in that movie. I really really like that movie. It's always a good summer watch. Um, if you need a pick me up I do recommend it. But that's the thing that women have realised for a very long time is that love doesn't just have to come from one romantic love. It's about community love. It's about sisterhood. It's about actually taking care of each other and being part of something else and empowering and lifting each other up. Which you know I could go into like that whole loneliness study that's come out recently because women know how to do all this stuff. Whereas men have sort of been like lone wolfed in a way. I'm really keen to hear your thoughts on this. Please be nice to each other in the comments. I know that this topic can really make people go like ah for some reason um, and I'm not intending that. Like I said I was trying to have a holistic view on the why and the systemic stuff you know. So anyway um, I hope that you enjoyed this. I will be taking a week off very soon. I did say that I was only going to do three videos a week but I seem to have been doing four even though summer is finally here so I'm going to go enjoy some summer. Take care of yourselves. Be nice to each other in the comments and I'll see you very soon. Bye! Woman enters her villain era and actually just sets a boundary. Do I look ridiculous because I feel great right now? But you'll tell me, right? This is the internet. I get told off all the time. It's so fun. Anyway, okay.